All right, y'all. Howdy. Welcome back to Cam Shack Productions. Today, I am at Big Cottonwood Canyon, and I wanted to share a little tip on how to stealth camp if you are up in a canyon and you want to be able to ski. Um, one of the really important things to know is that both Big and Little Cottonwood Canyon have a no overnight policy, which means that unless you are staying in one of the lodges, you are not allowed to sleep out on the road or in the parking lots of any of the ski resorts. Um, it can get pretty serious. So one of the things that's really important to remember is what we call an air lodge. And what that means is that because of the steepness of the canyons, there is so much snow that could come down that it actually takes out cars. And in the past, it's actually taken out full on lodges. When Interlodge goes into effect via UDOT, it's actually illegal to leave a building up here due to avalanche safety and hazard. So when that goes into effect, we take it really seriously. We want you to know what's happening, to feel informed. They're really serious. If they see you parked on the side of the road overnight, they will stop, they will tow your car, not to mention all of the stuff that it does to the snow plows and trying to get through all of that just doesn't work. So they're very serious. So let's go over a couple options that you can do to uh, be able to get up here early enough to get first turns and enjoy yourself and not have to worry about getting a ticket or even worse, getting trapped in an avalanche inside of your car. I'll give you a couple ideas. All right, so you figured out that sleeping up at the canyon is not an option unless you have a hotel. So some of the things you can do are get a hotel room, that'd be pretty simple, or you can head the 20 minutes, 30 minutes down canyon, and I can give you a couple tips on where to sleep down in the valley area, um, and then you just wake up super early and get up here so that you can be first chair. But definitely do not sleep up here. It could be so dangerous, and it's really something that will get you in big trouble. So head down canyon. So you found your nice quiet little neighborhood, you drove down the canyon, you picked the first one off the corner, you took the time to make sure that your rig was all stealthed out and ready to go. Now you're set, right? Definitely not. Let me make something very clear. Here in Utah, see something, say something was invented for this state. If you park in a weird location, if you park on a corner overnight and somebody doesn't recognize you, they are definitely going to make a call. So here in Salt Lake, you have to be really careful with what you choose to do and where you choose to camp. Do not pull into a quiet neighborhood. Do not pull into a driveway that you think might be abandoned. Just don't find a busy place that will keep you concealed. Um, and remember, stealthing out your vehicle is super important. All right, so one of the things I think people think about all the time is what if I go to a park? Uh, you know, public park, nice, easy place. It's a very loud public park, by the way. There's been trucks and motorcycles riding all over. Um, but you know, You've got your mountains just back behind you here. Um, so what if, what about this? Do not, in Utah, do not go to a public park. Most public parks close at 10 p.m. Um, and if you are there after 10, trust me, from being a teenager and a youth in Utah, you are begging for the police to come and knock on your window. So public parks in Utah, out. Let's go over a couple other ideas. I mean, anymore, you can't even park at Wally Mart the place that used to be expected. So now that we've talked about a few different places that we can't park, let's talk about a few that we can and make sure that we're safe and we can actually do it legally. All right, so one of the things you really want to make sure you do when you are looking for a stealth spot is to get out of little neighborhoods. It's just a bad place to be. You're going to draw attention to yourself and people in Utah take pride in knowing all of their neighbors. So you just want to make sure that you avoid that at all costs. What I'd recommend is look for some place that is active on a public street or area that is not private and will not get you in trouble. For example, if you're doing a search around the mouth of the canyon and you're looking for some things, 
look for apartment buildings. Those are usually really great places to sneak in and sneak out because people are always constantly in and out all over the place. The other thing that you can look for are large businesses or buildings that are open 24 hours a day. Uh, a lot of people will park in like motel, hotel type lobby or parking lots. And that's a pretty good strategy because, I mean, unless it's got security and what I would say is drive through. And if you see a bunch of people doing security and checking things out, don't stay there. Don't stay at churches. Don't stay at parks. Don't stay at schools. Um, and then the last place that I would recommend is where I'm going to spend the night tonight, but you're going to have to wait to find out where that is. So let's, uh, let's go show you a couple places that I'd recommend you, you check out for sell spots. All right, y'all. So here we are at what I would consider a prime stealth location. Um, you can see that along this little side street, we have a ton of other vehicles that are already parked out here and we're back up behind an apartment complex. So there's probably a lot of guests and people that come to hang out and stay that come here and park on this road. So it's probably pretty common to have cars here overnight. It's pretty busy. There's a big box store right over the corner there. Um, and you've got a little Cottonwood Canyon right there. And across the way is a dog park, so they're going to make some noise. So I think overall, this would be a pretty stellar little spot for stealth camping right along here. Um, and then, you know, back up behind here, you have a quiet little road. And just a nice little sneaky spot right in here. All right, y'all. So that right there is IMC which is the Intermountain Medical Center and probably the biggest hospital here in Salt Lake and right back behind that building is a gigantic parking lot where people park all night and I figured what better spot to get a nice little stealth spot so I'm gonna go try to see if I can find a spot back there and spend the night before I drive over I'm going to black out the majority of my windows here in the Nissan so that you can't see me once I get in there. So let's black some stuff out and then we'll head over that direction. Alrighty y'all. So I am in the car. It is 11 o'clock. I'm going to try to wake up early and see if I can get a moonrise photo tomorrow. So I am here at the hospital. Um, again, the reason I chose this spot is because there are always people here. Um, this place is always busy. There are people coming in 24 hours a day. So hopefully I will be able to get away with this. Uh, I have all of the windows reflected up and then uh, black cloth over the top of them. So I should be pretty blacked out. I doubt that I'm going to jump out and see what it looks like. I just think that that's like, hey, I'm stealth camping. Watch me. Um, but who knows? Maybe here in a minute once I uh, give it a little time. But I think right now I have the iPad. I'm going to watch a movie and kick it and probably just crash. Um, but yeah, I think that choosing a spot that is really, really busy, you know, hopefully I don't get the knock on the window. If I do, you guys will see it because I'm going to let a GoPro run all night. So, all right, y'all, I'm going to turn in, hit the hay, go to sleep, do all that fun stuff. All right, check in with you guys in the morning. I want to show you guys. Out the window. Cracked a little too much. But just to give you guys a sense of what it's actually like in here, check this out. The 
this is how bright it actually is. You got multiple lights running and just dark up front. All right, I gotta roll up that front window a little bit. Not bad, right? Nice little studio light, huh? My little ring lights, woo! Looking good. All right, y'all, good morning. It is 5.01. Uh, I am heading out to go try to take a photo of the temple with the moon rising. But I did spend the night over here at the hospital. Um, when I woke up this morning, I popped my head out the door just as a titch, and there was a security guard just sitting probably 30 yards away from my car, idling, watching my car. So I decided it was time to get up and get moving. That's part of stealth camping. When security comes around, you bounce. So, all right, I'll check in with you guys once the sun comes up. All right, y'all, so it is the next afternoon. I am at home, I came home, I took a shower, I took a nap for a little while, uh, and I figured it would just be much easier for me to give you my final thoughts on a place where I could open up a window, get a little light in here, and not have to whisper like I do in a parking lot or something like that. So I really wanna just stop really quickly and say, please, my shameless plug here, if you have gained anything or liked anything from this video so far, please go down, hit that like button. If you're really feeling generous, please hit the subscribe button. I am trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Right now I'm at 800. I'm so close to my goal for this year, so please go down, hit that subscribe. If you didn't like the video, go ahead, leave me a comment and tell me why. Hit that dislike button as well. Also, I'd recommend going and checking out Kyle Hates Hiking. If you don't think I'm fun and this is fun, you're definitely gonna like him, so go check it out. Just messing with you, Kyle. Um, overall, y'all, you know, I think Stealth camping is just that. If you really want to be in a city and you want to camp someplace where nobody knows that you're there, you have to think about it and be stealthy. Taking your giant overlanding rig, taking stuff with camping gear all over the top, you know, those are just going to draw attention to you if you're there overnight. I normally have a big toolbox that I keep up on the roof and a shovel and a tarp. I took all of that stuff off because I knew I'd be sleeping in the city. And again, it's just a matter of what are you trying to do? If you want to have all those things and you want to sprawl out and you want to open up the bed of your rig and you want to cook and enjoy something, go out to the desert someplace, go find a forest service road that's open somewhere and camp there. But if you really want to be in the city and you want to follow these tips, they're really good tips. You want to be visible, but still invisible, if you know what I mean. You want to be in a place where you're going to, you're going to draw attention being parked there all night. So if somebody looks at you and thinks, ah, oh, there's nothing going on in there, that's awesome. That's exactly what you're trying to go for. Um, and you know, there's a lot of tips and tricks that you can use to do that. In fact, in next week's video, I'm going to go through and show you guys how I stealth out this rig, all the things that I do different from when I go camping, and a few other additional tips on just being comfortable while you're stealth camping, um, and some really good ideas on how to eat and do all that stuff. So if that could interest you, please come back next week and check it out. But you know, overall, I did have that security guard parked right outside the door uh, it always makes you nervous and that's why I just got up and got out of there and that's the thing guys if you are stealth camping and somebody knocks on your window get up and move don't argue with them just just go um, if you see something that makes you uncomfortable get up and go um, if you hear something or you just feel that gut feeling get up and go go find a place go rent a motel a hotel whatever you need for the night just don't compromise your safety and don't go to jail for stealth camping. It's not worth it. Um, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Please, again, go down, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're feeling into it. Uh, don't subscribe. Hit the dislike button. You know, who am I to say you do you, right? All right, my friends. Uh, I hope to see you next week, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Be well.